So bloodthirsty. Uh, enjoyed the film. I thought it was an interesting on uh, werewolves. Uh, we'll start out. I mean, what, what did you guys for this project, Lauren? I'll start with you. Um, so for me, it was a lot of different things. Um, I had worked with Amelia Moses, the director, a year prior on another horror film that she wrote uh, called Lead With Me. And we had a really great experience working together, know that we work well together. So when she got brought onto this project to direct um, and she found out that the, the lead character is a queer pop star werewolf, uh, <laughs> she, she reached out to me and um, I, you know, instantly was like, this is my dream role, please, please. Um, cast me and um, yeah I mean the, the script was really interesting I I love that it it was co-written by two women mother daughter duo um, that Amelia was directing you know a lot of female power behind this movie that the main character is female that I would also get to play a female werewolf which you don't see very often in films no. um, and then the the queer relationship being part of this film uh, and the fact that it's, it's, you know, it feels very progressive in the way that it's just there. Um, it's not the central point of the film that there's lesbians in it. It's, there just is, uh, which is, you know, how it would be if it was a straight couple. So I loved that element to it. And then, you know, you bring in the music and it just, you know, the whole thing comes to life uh, in a way that, it wouldn't have otherwise, I don't think, that the, the music adds so much to this movie. And um, it's, yep. yeah, it, it was just so amazing when I heard it. Uh, I we'll like, get to that in a moment. I thought the yeah. music was very interesting. Uh, Greg, how about you? Now, I mean, this is another one where you get to play the antagonist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, I do want to- Is that surprising? No, uh, not for us. I mean, we're nerds, so we are huge fans of Far Cry 5. <laughs> so, um, I, you know what, the, the movie, um, the uh, Wendy, who was the writer, was directing me in a film um, just before this one started. And uh, she, she asked if I'd read the script and if I'd consider playing Vaughn. And I just thought the idea of the sacrifices that you need to make to achieve greatness. And, right. and what is, like, what is the cost? What are you willing to do? drew me to it thematically and i thought that that was a really interesting you know the the, the wearable story is an interesting way of exploring that and and you, what your how selfish you need to be in order to to give yourself most fully yeah and so so that i thought was really cool um and and that drew me to it and then once i was there these uh these ladies were amazing lauren and amelia and catherine were all just fantastic to work with. And um, I, I, I just became such a huge fan of, of Lauren's, uh, both as an actor and, and singing was so beautiful and Amelia as a director. Catherine, I didn't work with as much, but I really liked her as well. So it, was, it ended up being a really, uh, a really happy little, uh, uh, little happy journey there. You talk about uh, you know, what you're willing to sacrifice for stardom for VSR. And my first thought was, this is like a werewolf take on the whole Robert Johnson legend of selling your soul to the devil to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, it just kind of threw it out there. You know, what would, would you give into your, you know, carnivorous desire to do that? Uh, and I've never seen a werewolf movie do that mm -hmm. before. So that's what I kind of thought was an interesting take on the whole thing. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, it's not that obvious that you're a werewolf and it is kind of ambiguous. You don't really see that, uh, you know, until the end. So, mm -hmm. uh, Greg, for you, uh, I know you've played a lot of antagonists. Do you always find it more fun to do that? Well, I guess it's either that or I'm just a bastard in real life because I think out of 100 movies and TV shows and stuff now, I think 93 of them are, are real shit heels. So, like, I mean, yeah, let, yeah, it's more fun. I just, I explore. I, I, I'm, my, my normal Greg is so nice and sweet that I don't know how they possibly cast me in these parts. But somehow I dig deep and I just pretend my little head off. No, it's, you know what? i tell you something. It is fun. In real life, I, I try hard to be a good good dad and a good husband, responsible person. But there's something um, 
I feel like a circus animal that they let the cage doors open for when I'm on set. Like I just let out. I don't, I don't judge myself. I don't, I'm not polite. I don't pretend to be when I'm working. I just let, I just go by impulse. I live the way that if I lived in real life, I'd be in jail. But instead, <laughs> I'm, you know, long time married, decent father and, and, and got a career and get to do this. I figure as long as you're not really going out and starting a cult in Canada, you're doing good. We're getting close. Oh, brother, we're getting I know, close. that's so scary. That There's a manifesto in my bedroom because that'll be one soon. Oh, I can't God. wait to read that. Yeah, well, it's good. It's good. Uh, I want to talk about the music. God, I thought the music was very, very fitting. Yeah. Um, this kind of, you know, very, it was, it was very gothic. I guess that's the best word that I can use to describe it. Yeah. Now, I know you as a musician, Lauren, uh, how much of a hand did you have with the music in this movie? I, in creating the music, none. So uh, Lowell, who co-wrote the film, uh, she wrote, like, uh, these were her songs. I think for a few of them, she had co-writers, but um, she wrote these specifically for the movie. So, I mean, that's why that's why they work so well is because she she wrote them with, with this movie exactly in mind. Um, so I came on very last minute. I think I had about five days before we started shooting um, to learn all the music and also learn piano. So, uh, oh, so it was- You didn't have piano before this. No, really? so I, yeah. So I had to, uh, I mean, I didn't fully learn piano but I learned the parts that I needed to learn for, for the shoot. And uh, the, the production actually rented me um, a keyboard to keep in my hotel room. So when we'd get back after a day of shooting, I would just be tinkering away till the wee hours of the morning, bugging my neighbors. Oh, but um, Couldn't tell whatsoever. I thought you were actually a Thank piano. you. That's uh, great to hear. <laughs> um, um, again, there's always something interesting about horror films. I mean, you know, B-Horror is very obvious, bad guy, good guy. Uh, but again, this one's very ambiguous. Um, is when it comes to like horror films what draws you to horror films i mean what makes you just say i want to be able to do i want to do one like this um lauren how about you yeah i mean i think initially i kind of just got thrown into theater i started you know to sort of get typecast after uh pay the ghost and, and jigsaw but i'm extremely happy about it i i love the horror genre I keep saying that I, I think it's one of the funnest genres to act in. Um, I think that what really draws me into a horror film is um, more of the, the psychological thrillers, um, films that are rooted in the character and that are very character driven, which is why Bloodthirsty spoke to me a lot, um, as well as Bleed With Me, which was the other film I did with Amelia, very much you know, character driven and character based. Um, and then exploring the monstros, like the capacity for monstrosity in in humans. Um, yeah, that's that's what really draws me in. Right. How about you? What draws you to horror? Um, you know, they seem to keep offering them to me. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I just here's the thing. I'm not afraid. I you know, we all have we all can speak uh, the language of violence with some proficiency. I feel comfortable going to very dark places. I don't censor myself. I feel very free in that world. Clearly I come across on camera in a certain way. And it's also a business. Like I, um, after a history of violence, you know, the studios got very comfortable with me as a, a, a bad guy in various shades. And then you play it, you play it, and then they get comfortable. Like, oh, that's easy to do. And, and they're always very interesting and different. And I try to humanize them and find grace notes. And, you know, you, you have the pleasure of working with with fine other actors that reveal things about themselves that affect you in a way that that makes the character more compelling than just twirling a mustache and spilling some blood. But but it is, 
it's there's there is something freeing about it. I mean, we live we live with the impossible weight of a social mask most of the time, and we right. behave the way we're supposed to behave, and we do the right things, and it's fucking exhausting, and and it's not always fun. So if I if you you let me do that walk to set and and just let it all out, that's a nice way to spend the day. Well, you get to play with uh, you get to play with blood, you know. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always, always you know, it's kind of like you know Plato when you're an adult. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, or a yeah. Or one yeah. Or two. <laughs> uh, so. I feel I feel like there's always a part of the like a film that you're doing, especially a tour, where you just kind of take a stack like, you know, it's you and and stuff. And for me, I kind of when you were in the film, you're drinking the the meat juice. Even I kind of like winced and like. Yeah. So is there a part of that film for you that just it, you had to take a step back and it was almost that line where it was too gross for you? And I'll start with you, Lauren. Honestly, no. <laughs> no, I I love I love that shit. I mean, I I got to be really gross and bloody and bleed with me. So doing doing this, you know, it felt familiar, like familiar territory. Um, I love it. I just I love play. It feels like playing. You know, it's like you're you you know that you're creeping other people out, and I, I'm drawn to that. I think. You know, I think it comes from even when I was a kid for Halloween, I never wanted to be the one trick or treating. I wanted to be at home. I would make like a haunted house in my garage and I would I would chase kids with shovels like that was that was my favorite part of Halloween was scaring people. Nice. So I think that translates quite nicely <laughs> into me Jeez. working in horror. So Wow, that was a terrifying story. You were that <laughs> kid. Huh? That was me. You wearing a, no wearing a scream mask. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, I got time for one more question. And mm -hmm. here at that nerd show, we like to ask all of our filmmakers a very nerdy question. Right. Uh, uh -oh. You're a nerd. So here it is. If mm -hmm. you could have a superpower or weapon of choice from within the nerd universe to fight the forces of evil, what would you choose? And I'm going to start with you, Greg. How do we know if it's in the nerd universe? Well, <laughs> that is true. That is true. I mean, you can essentially <laughs> pretty much pick anything. anything okay, okay. okay I'm going to fight the forces of evil or the superpowers pretty evil. much. Yeah. Okay. I think like 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 Hulk strength. Like that would be like just brute rage strength. <laughs> That's a really good one. You got to make sure you got to make sure you always have a you know a, 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 a extra pair of shorts. Or when you rip your clothes. Yeah, yes, yes. That's, I think that's they kind of forgot. Or, or just take up sewing in, in like home ec or something like that and I can just mend my, my darn my garments when it's finished. <laughs> nice. How about you, Lauren? Um, I think I I think honestly the way to get rid of evil in the world is um is primitively like female. <laughs> Oh, so oh. I think I would just be like the most female creature you could ever picture like this like huge just like epitome of a woman and my weapon would just be like a crystal and I oh. would just like blast people with crystal energy because oh, like, uh, misogynists you know? are already afraid of you now exactly <laughs> exactly and that's what that's what I want so <laughs> nice. I've never that's that is a very unique answer. We've never had <laughs> so you're a big hippie chick with a crystal is essentially yeah. your superpower. Yeah. yeah. And I would just like I'd be waving my rainbow flag. <laughs> you're a mama cast with a crystal. Okay. Not, not. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. congrats on the film. Uh like I said, I enjoyed it. It was a very interesting take on werewolves. Um and uh and again. Uh, thanks for interviewing with us, and sorry for any of the technical difficulties. <laughs> we got through it. So. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Marcus. Bye.